And we're back on Global TV Talk Show. I'm in Southern California. And today is uh, February, I think, 7. Yep. And uh, uh, it's about 8.30 in the morning here. And our special guest is in London area, Carla Foden with Gallagher. And it's about 4.30 p.m. Uh, on Feb 7. Welcome, Carla. Hi, nice to see you, Ed. Yes, Thanks nice. for having me. Thank you. So the name of the program is Global TV Talk Show, and this is a unit of uh, globalbusinessnews.net, which I founded and operate. And one of the vehicles uh, in the past, say 20 years ago, when I was printing magazine, glossy magazines, trade magazines, uh, Global HR News was one of the units and it was all the rage back then because of globalization and hr going global of course mm. big companies like bp for instance always been global but but many many others have not so we formed this magazine to cover um, what companies are doing in hr across borders and uh uh, it was a big hit in the U.S. at the time. And then I got involved in doing other things, and I put it to bed and started doing globalbusinessnews.net and training conferences, mostly in the U.S., and um, and uh, Global TV started because of COVID uh, four years ago. So now, with the change in corporate organization and structure as a result of post-COVID and a great shift in employment uh, issues. And mm -hmm. Global HR is front and center all over again, but in, in a different way. So I'm bringing back Global HR News, but only online and mm -hmm. not in print because that's too expensive. And, and this way we can go across time, across space, across borders, into what I'll call the global meeting room, which is this thing right here on the screen. Yep. Makes so welcome. Sense. This is the launch day of Global HR News PR. And <laughs> so we're going to be talking about companies that you know about in, in Great Britain. And mm -hmm. our audience is global, uh, although about 60% U.S. Canada. And about 20 to 25 percent uh greater london and dublin um okay so just so you know and then the rest of the world is everything else <laughs> yeah. but so this is our audience and it is mostly business to business and almost entirely connected with talent everything to do with talent recruitment onboarding talent assessment, learning and development once they're onboarded, and then they're assigned or deployed, oftentimes on some kind of a, a out of town assignment. And that's where mobility and business travel come in and compliance issues. And and then retention or coaching those people is the new, th new idea while they're on assignment so that they're more productive and helpful for the company, ROI. Mm -hmm. And then they are so good at what they do now and with all the coaching, they'll quit if they don't get a better job and taken care of. And so that's the GM or global mobility revolution transformation that's underway. And that's what I took from the news about your recent meeting at Gallagher. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about technology, of course, and let's talk about how global mobility is transforming itself or should. Okay. So first of all, tell us about Carla Foden. How long have you been involved in global mobility things? Oh, uh, well, about 16 years now, like most people, I fell into global mobility. The link was very much commercial property. I worked for a company called Estates Gazette before I ever got into global mobility, um, but started off at Crown, um, was there for quite a few years, 
wanted to expand my wings a bit um, and went into immigration um, and a few other places after that. But most recently, before I joined Gallagher, I worked for EY, um, which is where the connection with Global Expat Pay came about. Um, and yeah, how I've been able to bring something a little bit different to Gallagher. Oh, that's very interesting. Uh, just so you know, EY and I have uh, been in relationship for a long time across years. And just recently, EY hosted my New York meeting inside their global center uh, yeah. right across from Wall Street. And they liked it sufficiently that they invited me back <laughs> to do it again. So we're doing the, the second edition of that event on uh, this coming May. Um, so technology, how yeah. are you using technology? <laughs> um, so, so there's two things. There's one, there's the, the people side of it, and then there's the technology side of it. So if we just take it back a, a little step. So if you were to ask people in the global mobility industry, if Gallagher actually delivered any services in global mobility, most would say, no, they're an insurance company. Um, we are a bit more known for benefits, but certainly global mobility wasn't really a known service from Gallagher. So when I joined, it was kind of a real opportunity with a, a blank sheet of paper to look at actually what is the art of possible here. Um, Gallagher is very much technology minded, but also very people minded. So for us as a team in Global Mobility Solutions, it was a real opportunity to look at what's in the market, um, look at previous experiences at some of the companies that I've I mentioned to you, um, and actually look at what, what's not happening with technology in the market, but what could be, what is, is that art of possible? So our team are very much there from a service delivery perspective, but it's underpinned by a global true ecosystem through APIs of what we do have as default partners for each service from tax, immigration, payroll, short-term business travel, uh, relocation, um, all in one place on one platform, but then also bringing in Gallagher side of it from the benefits as well. So really looking at a true international HR ecosystem for the employee where everything is all in one place. Well, thank you for that. That beautifully encapsulates what Global HR News will cover going forward. So let me ask you a question. Well, let me just make a statement. My understanding of insurance companies in mobility is all about benefits, financial mm -hmm. rewards. And mm -hmm. so tell me about some of the financial, the benefit package that Gallagher provides to uh, just don't even tell me the company name, but just tell me the, <laughs> the products and services that fit under that umbrella. Yeah, so so I'm very much the global mobility team here, um, which is a little bit different for Gallagher, but essentially from the benefit side, there's not much that we don't do. So whether it's helping a client form a strategy for global benefits, um, obviously, benefits vary from country to country. So how do you make that consistent across the world? Um, it's things like health, medical, life, disability, pensions, pretty much everything that you would need to have covered if you were if you were moving overseas for your company. So it's a massive long list yeah. <laughs> so, of, of what we can do. Yeah, that's that's cool. And that gives you entree into the corporate uh, HR function, mm -hmm. um, because everything flows through HR. Um, yeah. So uh, that's the number one portal, I believe, for services trying to break into big companies. Yeah. But that's kind yeah. of a funny word, break in. So let's not talk about that. <laughs> It's, it's very it's very difficult because, um, you know, when you've got an HR function, there's so many different specialisms that sit within that function and they're quite often siloed. So you wouldn't necessarily have a benefits manager working alongside a global mobility manager. Obviously, it impacts the employee, but they do their own thing. They have their own partners. They have their own technology, et cetera, et cetera. So 
that's that's where we've really come in to bring absolutely everything together to make sure that one you, you know there's not loads of different IT platforms that they're having to go on to that their employees are having to go on to it's literally one in one place under one contract so that's a really different take on on anything that's ever been done in the industry let's get back to that in a minute uh, so Mobility has a seat, quote unquote, seat at the table. And here we are. I'm at my table and you're at your table and we're equal. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I'm sure that when we look at other stakeholders, like, for instance, uh, the cross section of people who uh, I saw who were at that special meeting, that yeah. was a, a broad picture. And you mm -hmm. had representation of all the stakeholders mm -hmm. That's and, right. and, and, and some others. So um, that's why I'm so excited. I jumped on this idea right away of inviting you uh, to join Andy Elliman and, and I uh, at HSBC on April 23 and yeah, to, to take that concept now and make it larger and bring people in person uh now they can also tune in uh because we'll be zooming most of it as well uh, but we want people to come if they're local of course so let's talk about the gm revolution what's the headline here what revolution and why <laughs> so it's it's really just changing the status quo yeah, you know, I just think in the industry, the the way that companies have been managing global mobility is, has stayed the same for such a long time. There's been a lot of consolidation in our industry, but essentially for global mobility to be able to evolve in the way that they need to, their their service partners also need to do the same thing. But the problem is there's been so much investment in technology, for instance, over the years that actually now because of assignment types changing, you know, gone are the days of the $50,000 household goods invoice that, you know, companies would make a lot of money from. It's, it's really about having to be creative now and rethinking things and looking at actually what could we do differently. But the problem is, is that there's so many companies that are so well established they've been doing it this way for such a long time that's really hard to, for them to unpick so so this is where our revolution came into it with all of our partners we went through rigorous kind of search of the market to make sure that we found the right default partners for our clients they don't have to use them but you know they can um, and, and that's essentially where where we came from was that it's a fresh look at things as a collective collaborating together um, and just just enabling our clients to really be strategic and deliver that ROI, which is the holy grail of global mobility, right? Everyone's always been looking for how we can do that. But we believe that through this approach, you actually can start to deliver that properly for the first time. So what about coaching the assignee and family, not only before they leave town, but while they're on assignment so that uh, they're more productive. Yeah. So it should never take away um, that, that people interaction. Um, and that's where our default partners come in. You know, our, our team um, at Gallagher very much handhold um, are there as like that overall central person that's, that's kind of like their, their counsellor in a way, you know, for their entire process, because it's quite daunting moving overseas. There's so many different people that you have to speak to and you don't really understand what, what to expect or what you need to do or how to prepare. So um, that's very much at the heart of what our team do. But when it comes to coaching and things like that, if it's a, a formal service, then there's absolutely, there's lots of companies out there that can do that, like NetExpat. Um, and they are also one of our partners. So it's really down to what that company culture is like, what the employees need, and, and just understanding they're all different, um, their circumstances are all different, and, and actually having been in their shoes really helps. So it's very much about remembering that it's about people. It's data's great, analytics are great, 
but it's people that you're dealing with and and that's that speaks to hr not just global mobility so let's talk about something specific here just as an example and then we can go to another specific as well if <laughs> if, if you want household goods yeah it's kind of crazy when you think step away and you look back through a yeah. you know turn the telescope around why are why ship your bedroom set 10,000 miles when you could rent furniture that probably fits the space better. Yeah. Yeah. And so many companies are looking at, at giving you a monetary value instead. Now the, the thing for an employee is to make sure it's, it's like for like. So if you, if you have a sofa, if you have like a bedroom set, like you said, that when you go to your new location, that you're not going to be worse off in terms of, you know, is it going to be Ikea furniture level that, you know, you're you're going to be renting in your new country when you had lovely antiques where you, at home. So it's like making sure that within with it being reasonable that that you are going to have as much like to like as possible. Um, and, and really companies that offer that monetary value it does offer that flexibility for employees to be able to choose what what they do um or you can always you know rent a furnished property that's that's another option in some countries it's a good idea to do that like germany for instance um it's, it's not really common for for you not to so i think it's it's also the length of time that you're going on an assignment for, or it might be that it's, it's very short, or you might be a commuter or something. It makes absolutely no sense um, to take anything other than like your favorite books and excess clothes or something like that. You know, it just doesn't make sense for, for employees to do that. Right. So the household goods industry doesn't like that, but no, <laughs> that's, like, that's the, that's the, the life. Yeah, yeah, that's, things that's have it. Yeah, things have changed. I mean, there are there are still, in my opinion, some some industries for clients where they will still be very, very generous, and they will still allow those kind of volumes and uh, those kind of invoices to go through. But it's very far and few between. I mean, we have our own mobility program at Gallagher, and it just it's not a frequent thing to see those kind of volumes of household goods. It's it's really rare, like maybe one or two a year. Um, you know, it's it's a different world that we live in, and and actually, I think it's a good thing when you think about ESG, etc. It's it's a good thing. So th let's talk about um, permits foundation, uh, which is an old old thing, but still there and still being addressed because the problem is there of dual career and mm -hmm. work permits and work from anywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. So work from anywhere. So, I mean, this is a positive thing in my view. It's a positive outcome from COVID where companies had to have people be safe and work from anywhere and mm -hmm. try to be productive and get used to this kind of communication rather than a phone call mm -hmm. or fax, God forbid, <laughs> or, um, <laughs> and of course, email. So it used to be a big deal that the spouse couldn't work on mm. on the but now you can work from anywhere you just have to be compliant with whatever the rule is locally so it yeah. solves the problem and so it's much more advanced some of the issues don't go away of dual career and mm. and therefore comfort within the relationship while on assignment there's so many mental health issues that are involved in our industry mm -hmm. that were always swept under the rug, but no more be no. Be because some important people have been impacted negatively. And that has, of course, been the trickle down. And so now everybody is able to benefit from the new awareness, if you will, and the practicality of paying attention to the mental health issues and practical communications and relationship issues between a uh, family uh, on assignment. Mm. Uh, because if that doesn't get solved, the assignment blows up and the company is going to lose a ton of money mm. yes. and wreck somebody's life. 
Yeah, yeah, and I mean that's a that's a huge thing for for Gallagher is looking at the benefit side of well being. Yeah, because um, you deal with people. Exactly, and and is the old approach of actually offering a gym discount really the right way to go anymore? Or actually, do we look at spa treatments and um, days out, and um, you know, you know, Peloton bikes, things like that, that that's a little bit different. Um, it's just one small element of it, but when you are moving a family overseas, the well-being of them is is really really critical um, because no one wants a failed assignment. It's really expensive, um, you know, and, and worse if if something actually happens to that family unit because one one party is unhappy, the other isn't. You know that that can cause. A, a number of different issues so that's something that we work really carefully with our with our clients on is is actually initiatives with the well-being of their employees and again actually does form part of our ecosystem as well so for us that's that's really really key to what we do with the people experience um, of moving overseas can i do a deep dive with you on something and if you don't like it just re redirect me okay i okay. take no no offense <laughs> i'm i'm just a happy tv talk show host <laughs> Still. <laughs> so let me ask you a question here about mental health issues yeah. um of uh um let's just say a family that's on assignment okay mm. you know just generic family it, no specifics needed here it's just a family so it's the employee that's been transferred mm -hmm. and what about the other person <laughs> never mind the kids and mm -hmm. you know typically teenagers are, are just below teenage and this is a major problem because a lot of people haven't been moved or they were but it was like an extended business trip or a commuter arrangement rather than a domicile. And mm. that means the spouse or the partner is sitting around with nothing to do most of the time. And the employee is under tremendous pressure to perform and you're out of sorts. And then, I mean, here's just a silly example. I was in Washington, DC, uh, where I produced a live meeting with a global law firm in their offices just last week. And I haven't been in Washington since pre-COVID, uh, which is four years, all right? And so I was in an apartment in a, in a decent, nice area. And I said, okay, where's the Safeway? And they pointed, well, go across here and go two blocks down and eventually you'll come to it. Yeah. So I did. Okay, no problem. And then I walk into Safeway and there's this giant store, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I'm sure you have something relevant to that in London. Um, sure. Yeah, I mean, a giant grocery store, aisles and aisles of baked beans and then aisles and aisles of bread or, <laughs> or eggs or, and beer and wine, of course. But all right. So I do shopping in the neighborhood here in downtown San Diego. So I'm familiar, <laughs> but I don't know where anything was. And mm -hmm. I wound up pushing the wagon around looking for this and looking for that. And I, I actually had heart palpitations because I, I got concerned about where is anything here and you know mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to get 12 eggs I just want four <laughs> you know a small package and mm -hmm. I, I had to find them and it was just so out of sorts because it was new I wasn't familiar with it so take that experience of being in on an international assignment never mind Washington DC in a safe way, you know, which you think is a no brainer. Uh, uh, it is, there's an impact there. Yeah. And, and it's just, can you imagine the magnification of that where, you know, maybe the kid is crying because he's not with friends or she's not with friends, no matter how much time they spend on zoom uh, mm -hmm. or TikTok, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And all of that plays on the partner or spouse. Yeah. All of that plays on the employee. 
how can that employee be productive with all that BS going on around them? And, yeah. you know, from a love point of view, you got to take care of all this. And second mm -hmm. of all, my God, how am I going to take care of all this? I got work to do. Mm -hmm. And so that is, I believe, the crux of the issue. Yeah. And then how the vice president of XYZ understands or doesn't understand mobility and why it's so expensive and blah, blah, blah. That's another issue. And so yeah. you got all this stuff happening. So Gallagher is, is an established, well-known, uh, re great reputation of customer yeah. service and ethics. And I would think you're like an emergency room in a hospital where you're yeah. dealing, dealing with crisis after crisis, coming mm -hmm. up with solutions. Yeah, yeah, whether it's helping clients with their communication, with change management, just thinking differently about how you communicate. Um, and, and, you know, it's one of the biggest issues for global mobility is how do you stop vendor managing and dealing with escalations and being able to actually focus on that employee and their family? That That is the kind of nirvana, um, is where do you get that time? Where do you stop being transactional and actually be able to be proactive and, and care for those employees. And again, that's that's where we came from with with you know what we've created to take all that away so that you can actually partner with the employees, you can partner with the business. You're not sat there trying to understand Excel spreadsheets because let's face it, unless you're the massive programs of this world, you have no budget. So, you know, we're very, very conscious of that. Um, and and you know, if you can move away from Excel spreadsheets and focus on, on, on the employee, then it makes a really big difference. But it's, it's not just about that. It's about how you communicate. Um, and each company's culture is very different. Their employees are very different. So it's how do you balance that out? You know, how much do you do through um, technology? You know, what, what do you do? I mean, we have... Um, a client that um, literally put little stickers on bananas in the break room saying, do you need help? Are you OK? Um, contact HR. But it, it was it was just a very, very simple little way of just showing that the company cared and that they were approachable. You know, it seems like a funny little idea, but it, it worked really well for them because you know, sending loads and loads of emails about mental health and things like that, that's great, but actually it doesn't no, it's, always it's, it's actually scary. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's right. intimidating yeah. and it's like, oh, don't yeah. HR, don't want them to know that I'm having problems. But but actually if it's done in a really soft way, um, it tends to land a lot better. So are you trained? Uh, of course you're trained, but you can't handle everybody. You know, you no. probably have hundreds of clients. So... <laughs> How, so do you use a DSP or do you manage the whole process, uh, making sure that uh, they're using uh, a human approach? Yeah, so so our team, we, we have a, a team of ex-in-house uh, specialists. They've all got that holistic understanding of global mobility. So they've either been in tax, immigration, relocation at some point, but they've all managed their own in-house um, mobility programs in their career so so it starts with us we do things like um, policy reviews that sort of thing um, looking at helping clients when they're moving to a new location and then we'll do the administrative part so things like cost estimates that sort of thing um, and then we work with all partners for all the different kind of services so tax returns we work with a partner immigration we work with a partner um, the relocation side of it, we work with a partner. Um, but it, it's all through this technology ecosystem. So we automate pretty much every single part of the entire move, um, but completely independently. So if a client wants to stay with their particular tax provider, yep, you can. It, they just plug it into to our ecosystem. So the ecosystem is a program? Yeah. That a, a vendor... Platform who we both know uh, has, yeah. has worked on. <laughs> yeah, we call it Innova um, because we kind of took, we took the core um, of one of our partners um, and their technology 
and expanded it to be what it is right now um, with a huge roadmap um, of things like it, like I said about incorporating a lot of what Gallagher does within that that platform. So um, it, it's, we've essentially added an awful lot of legs to it. Um, and that's come off the back of a lot of very long standing relationships. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about, in summary, as we come to a close, um, the comfort zone of Gallagher doing all this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they are so excited. The spotlight is definitely on us because, you know, they've known for, for a long, long time that they could venture into global mobility. It was just doing it the right way and how to go about it. So, so Gallagher is, is a very um, entrepreneurial mindset kind of company. You know, they, they've embraced that for sure, got behind it, invested in it. So, so our, our kind of mission now is, is to get this out there, is to, to let everybody know that there is a different way. Um, and the Nirvana has now been created. So, you know, just, just get in touch with us and, and we'll tell you more about it. But, um, you know, it's, it's really exciting um, to have been able to do this and, and a fresh approach to global mobility. So um, we'll, see, we'll see how it lands. So far, everyone's saying to us it's too good to be true, um, but it definitely isn't. We have clients, including our own programme, um, that are, are using it, that are, are you know, being implemented as we speak. So, you know, it does exist. Um, and, and, yeah, it's, it's just really nice to be completely independent, be very flexible and, and just look at a different way of doing things. So uh, at Gallagher Insurance Risk Management Consulting, Carla, yeah. C-A-R-L-A underscore Foden, F-O-D-E-N at A J g.com yep. yes that's the one <laughs> carla thank you nice to meet you you too ed thank you very much so we'll see you again on tv but also uh april 23 in london yep wonderful i'll be there thank you thanks ed see Bye -bye. you soon Bye. Right, this is ed signing off in san diego and that's carla in london cheers it's almost happy hour <laughs> bye thank you